Enda, Barimin. Guys, I, I just want to ask, when are we as Africa going to stand on our own? Hmm? When are we going to be independent from the rest of the world? Stop uh, kissing the ass of China, Russia, the USA, and Europe. When? I'm just asking. In 2024, China summit. China managed to bring 50 heads of states to China. To go and do what? To beg for some, you know, some donations, to beg for some new technology, some ideas. This is a new form of colonization. They give us the money, they give us the aid, and they take the minerals out of our land. And our African leaders seem not to catch up to this. Let's also talk about the farm matters that are continuing in South Africa. Two men were found banned beyond recognition. And I said, if the police are clever, if really they want to attack the white people, the bulls that are, are treating farms as if it is their own land, they must understand that most farms in South Africa are crime scenes. What they found in that farm, they can find it in almost all the farms in South Africa. I'm telling you. Uh, Tembisi Milani continues to defend herself, the Minister of Justice, in terms of this um, gundu. Uh, loan that she received uh, her story is storing up but the math is not matching up if you know what I'm trying to say I hear what she's trying to say and I always ask the question why now so many people directed directly from VBS and indirectly from VBS why, why is she the target or is it the portfolio of Minister of Justice that is targeted here or what and surprise, surprise, like we always said, the 10 MPs of the MK political party that took the MK to court while they lost the case, the Western Cape Court ruled in favor of the MK and those guys are expelled. We always knew that this was going to happen. Um, you know, when a political party does not want you in, in parliament representing them, there is nobody on earth that can stop them. Also, I want to speak about Cyril uh, Ramaphosa, his term here in South Africa. What does the man think and what was his thoughts when he saw the MK coming? And um, the big question I want to ask Abu Siral is that when are you going to stop pretending? I mean, we can see what's going on. When are you going to stop pretending? I... Welcome to King Said So, Africa's one land, one language, one currency, one army on King Said So. Africans can unite. Pan Africanist podcast. Enjoy. Peace in Pan Africanism to all my African brothers and sisters from all around the world. Welcome back to King Said So. I'm your host, Kahi Sosongwane, Zinchiva, Mr. Easy Imadi Enengi Nengi. And we're back at it again with another one. Guys, hey, China, the 2024 China African Summit, they managed to bring like 50 heads of state. Well, not all of them were heads of state. Uh, many high uh, uh, high profile government officials went to China. They all went there to go and shake the hands of the Chinese president and sit there and listen to how China can donate uh, to South Africa and Africa at large. It's so funny to me that the leaders don't see that the reason why Russia is doing an African, a Russia African summit, why the US is doing the same, why Europe is doing the same, why China is doing the same, why India is doing the same, is because of the minerals in our land. We are simply not taking uh, control of our minerals because we don't want to develop the technology. Africa is, uh, you look at the African um, curriculum uh, in the educational sector, it's not. It's not motivating that our children must, must innovate new things technology-wise. That's why China will always be ahead because they've been investing in technology and especially at the school level, a very low level uh, for many years. Africa has not even started the fifth, uh, the fifth industrial revolution. We have not started yet as Africa. We are so behind. That's why we'll continue running to China, continue to beg them for it. It's like having diamonds underneath your ground, but going to your neighbor to beg them for bread because you don't know how to mine your, 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 your diamonds properly. I know that's a stupid example, but you know, you know what I'm trying to say. They, for me, as Africans, 
We need to develop leaders that can do, the, do it on their own. Leaders that can say, just like these 21 countries in Europe that allow free flow of information and uh, people and goods and services, we can do it also in Africa. In Europe, you can drive from one country to another, no passport, no visa needed. Is that not open borders? Your, your service can be, if you're selling, for example, um, let me say you are selling, uh, let me make a stupid example, like a, a simple example, like cell phones, not a stupid one, cell phones. If you are in South Africa, your market is limited because it's only South Africans. The middle class in South Africa is about uh, four to five million people. But if South Africa was mixed with Botswana and, and, and Zimbabwe and whatever, your cell phones could be selling to those countries without any restrictions because of the integrated border system. Europe is doing this. It's only you Africans that don't want to do this. That's why you run to China uh, for, um, for little donations. Let's not get into it. Because once... You, you open the, the, the borders and not physically saying, uh, let everyone just do as you please. But to say goods and services can now uh, free flow uh, between countries and people can just, I can just drive to Zimbabwe, go there, sell my cell phones, come back at home. That's it, you know. But hey, South Africans don't want to hear that because South Africans' jobs must be for South African uh, people and South African working uh, uh, opportunities must be for South African people, but South African land can be for white people and no black person complains. <laughs> right, speaking about white people, um, the farmers are continuing to uh, analyze us in, in farms and they are not going to stop. I continue to tell you guys that farms are crime scenes, big time. Because they can kill, they can kill you, burn you alive there, and do whatever, feed you to the dogs, uh, bury you. Uh, you know, there, there's so many things that they can do at the farm. Because the police don't go to the farm. Why would the police go to the farm? They can just shoot you with their rifle, take you there, and uh, accuse you of stealing something, and just uh, torture you, kidnap you, and finish you. Listen to this. Bodies believed to be those of Wanda Masangu and Tembeni Mguni have been found. Police received information about the whereabouts and on arrival, two bodies that were banned beyond recognition were discovered. The deceased were reported missing last month. They are believed to have been assaulted and killed by farmer Reynolds Stain and security guard Dumsani Masilela. Now, these two suspects appeared in court for bail application, which has now been postponed to next week. To be precise, to say how long it will take us, it will depend because what we have done, we have actually submitted everything to forensic and it's for them to definitely to um, have the results and we wish by all means that if we can have them as quick as possible, it will help us as it will strengthen our case. It's going to be a lot of work to be done, and uh, but I believe that it is possible because there's a lot of processes that are going to be performed so that we can be able really to link everything properly, especially to say these are the two people really who were banned in the open drum with uh, alleged with petrol. If definitely those people, definitely, as I said from the beginning, it will assist us a lot. At the moment, I think we are going to rely to what we have, especially the arrest of the two um, security guards, as well as the, the farmer at the stage. And uh, with the investigation, hence the matter is more is still sub JDK. We will actually allow the investigation to take its place, take its place. And uh, is, we hope without doubt that more information is still going to come forward because we think that this is not a, a first exercise that is taking place, that what actually had happened in the farm. We believe that more information we can get and be able to actually to um, have a better case. The issue with South Africa and the farm matters is that South Africa does not have uh, a proper intelligence. We don't have drone technology. We don't have uh, uh, police that are, can freely flow into farms, go walk around and see what is going on. What are you guys burning? What is this? What did you bury here? Can we open up here? Uh, where are your, you know, where are your tools? Let's check the tools. If there is there any blood on the tools or whatever, I don't know. Something that the police can just frequently go to farms and check because I'm telling you, once they do that, ah. Uh, it's a crime scene everywhere. They're going to find skulls. They're going to find human remains 
everywhere in most farms in South Africa. Because farm owners see uh, farm workers as objects that they can do as they please with. They will honor love you, those people. And that's the honest truth. And South Africans don't want to listen when we are telling them. Our police are simply not going to do it. Now that we have a white minister of agriculture, he's not going to motivate this. We also have um, Mzwanele Mnyonso uh, of the PAC at agriculture also. He's not going to say anything about this. Attack the farms. Go and search the farms. I'm telling you, you're going to find illegal weapons you're gonna find bodies everywhere you're gonna find uh, uh, you're gonna find stories that are horrific in south africa but as long as we allow these bulls to do as they please i don't know i don't know i i don't know like take these trainees man take police trainees and send them to the farm and let them walk there teach them how to identify a crime scene you know what i'm saying because guys it's not going to stop. Each and every year we hear this. South Africans, we have even become lamb to, to, to murder. Murder is normal in South Africa. It's like it doesn't shock us anymore. Two people were killed in the farm. Oh, serious? Oh, shame, man. Who are they? Oh, shame, man. That's how South Africans respond to crime anymore. You know, somebody was shot uh, because of uh, uh, extortion or uh, a man, whatever. Wow, serious? Where in Eastern Cape? Ah, oh, man, this thing is getting out of control. Hmm, that's interesting. Next topic. That's how we South Africans take murder now. It's normal. The police have forced us to to normalize something that's abnormal. It's crazy what is happening in our country. Tell me, what do you think? Do you think police must go into farms and search, search the whole land, search the whole land? And I'm t uh, guys, I promise you. I promise you, there will be bones that will be discovered of people that went missing 15 years ago, 20 years ago, and more. I'm telling you. Let's listen quickly to Tembi. Uh, Similane, uh, what, what is she saying actually about the payment, the proof of pay? Is there proof of payment in this uh, uh, VBS saga nonsense that is happening? And why is she the one that they are targeting so much? Hey, she's making headlines these days proof the question was also asked in parliament about where is the proof that you actually did pay back the money you have that proof i have that proof the proof has been given to president now let's let just a little bit can you imagine the session of parliament started around half past nine yeah. to almost around half past 12. me playing members of parliament for three hours telling them there's payment when it's not there i wouldn't do that you know, I may be sitting possibly in a position where people think there's nothing honorable about it, but it can't go to that extent. I have the proof of payment. I have the contract. I did not take a loan from VPS. I took a loan from Kondu Wealth Solutions. I paid from my FNB business account into the net bank business account of Kondu Wealth Solutions. That's the proof of payment. And out of interest, I've actually even received requests from other uh, 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 companies that have been dealing with this to sign, send a proof of payment. Verkmans have been uh, the investigators in this. They've written me a letter last week to say, please share with us the proof of payment. And I will do that with them because they are part of the agency that is dealing with the investigation. So I'm not refusing to account. Hmm. Right. There was even an argument, for example, of whether the percentage is a, a high or not. Even Verksman in their calculation, they say, show cause if your interest was at 11.2 percent. And it was. It was actually slightly uh, with about 2 percent. So I don't know where does the 40 percent come from. But well, people are at liberty to say whatever they want to think. But that proof is there. It will also be made available. Uh, did, to Verksman. did you know about the interest on the loan when you took out the loan? Yes, this I mean, it, it, it's a fair loan. It had to have interest. And you found that loan fair enough given the kind of loan that you were taking Exactly, out. the kind of loan that I was taking, the business and the time that uh, it will take for me, as I indicated in the justice portfolio, 
I, the loan was paid, the business was to start in January 2017, and uh, uh, the payment was to happen as the company gets to be able to establish. And it established, opened its account. I mean, it's on record. You can go to the bank and check that somewhere in 2019. Mm. As we were finalizing the preparations for the repayment and the other portion having been paid, and the bank collapsed in the investigation. In fact, National Treasury came to us before they placed the bank under curatorship. Yeah. To explain to us as municipalities to say, we are looking into this thing and we would want to engage with you closely. Had I continued to pay, today you will be asking me why when you are told that you will be investigated and you quickly, quickly pay. I hold on to it, started the payments immediately when the report had been concluded. The reason why uh, Tembi is being attacked is going to be revealed. Um, if not after this whole thing happens, like this, they, there must be a reason, man. There must be a reason. Because when, when she's explaining to us why she withheld the money and only paid it after the investigation was done and everything, she's kind of making sense, you know. Um, the problem is that, unfortunately for her, this this um, uh, business was linked to the municipality. Unfortunate for her. So there's that doubt that hey, she might be telling a lie. Yes, she did try to cover her tracks. Uh, her reasoning does uh, some way, somehow make some sense. But because she's ANC and the, a the label of ANC uh, MPs and ANC official being corrupt, it, it will, it's going to follow her, unfortunately. Is the president going to take those proof of payments um, uh, as part of the evidence to say, no, man, she has done what she has done? Because only the president can protect her in this regard. In this regard, only the president can protect her. A parliament can do whatever they want, but the president can really protect her and convince other parties to protect her also in parliament. But I, I just like they protected him through the Palapala saga, because we know everything um, depends on which side are you playing for. So I'm not sure, uh, Simelane, which side is she, is she playing for? Is the president going to uh, take her into confidence or what? I don't know. I don't know. All I'm just saying, I find it very strange that the whole focus of VBS has now moved to um, to 500,000. 500, uh, VBS, that was almost 1 billion. No, it was more than 1 billion. Um, uh, we are now focusing on this 500,000. That was paid back, by the way. And that was never received directly from VBS. So, I, uh, I don't know. You guys will tell me on the comment section what do you think it's a story that i'm going to continue to follow closely you guys know i'm a little bit biased to utembi because uh, i like her as an as a as a, as a politician I, and i and i do admit that i think she she planned it here uh, it would be very unfortunate for the anc to lose a leader like her yeah, you know considering everything that she has done in in uh, for Limpopo look how well Limpopo did uh, look how well Limpopo did she's part of those people that bring confidence for the people of Limpopo anyways um the four I mean not the four the ten the ten members of parliament of the MK who are refusing to go <laughs> the MK is like hey move out we want to put in serious people about Prime Bolivia we want to put in Abu Montana there can you guys get out and they're like no we are taking you to court <laughs> you're taking the, your party to court you are expelled ah you are expelled we did not want to be here we never thought that we'd be here but we find ourselves here if you could do research about each and every one of us, you will understand the work that we have put in the MK party. And we are doing it voluntarily. We are not expecting anything in return. Because when you join an, an organization, a political organization, you know that whatever you do, it comes from the heart because you believe in the vision of the party. So we found ourselves in parliament. You know, when a, 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 a person who does not know anything about politics starts saying things like, when you are doing things in politics, uh, you do it out of your, the goodness of your heart, uh, you don't know politics. <laughs> uh, you don't know politics. There's no something of goodness out of your heart. In politics, huh? it's not as wash in your hand in politics. There's nothing. They, we don't have honest politicians anymore. A politician does something, there's a reason why they are doing that thing, and there's something that they are looking to gain out of it. 
Very few politicians are like both Abu uh, Vuyo Zongula. We very few genuine politicians are out there. We can't we can't name we can't name many. You know, I mean, uh, uh, what one? Uh, okay, Fidel of the um, uh, the Colored Party, Colored Congress. Um, is one of those guys you see is genuine for the colored call. Not the who, who, who was his name? Who Gaten McKenzie. That one he told us from the beginning. I'm here for power. I just want gold. I want blue lights. He's a criminal. From from prison to where he is, it's a hallelujah. You know, all of these politicians, they're there in it for something. So these ones, they thought that polit politics is like a private sector where, where when, when, you, when you are fired, there must be a reason on the table. No, the reason is good enough that the party don't want you. So I'm so happy that this is behind. Mainstream media is going to stop making noise. It's over. There's those uh, 10 guys, they, they lost the court case and they are expelled from the MK. Asabafuni Mabahabe. Cyril Ramaphosa. How do you sleep at night? Hmm? Knowing that under you, the ANC has rotted. Under you, the ANC has performed at its weakness, weakest point. Under you, the South African government has failed. Unemployment is high crime. Under you, nothing came right. President Zira Ramaphosa, under you, nothing came right. Well, things like that. Were you quite shocked, Mr. President, when you realized, right, we're no longer majority? Yes, it, it was a shock. Mm. Uh, it was the, the, the most unbelievable outcome. Even with the entry of the MK party, I, I knew that they would pick up votes, but never to this extent where they would reduce the ANC's majority in the way that they did. Uh, so it was a, a big shocker, uh, unexpected, but it was a surreal moment. And we, we had to accept that this is now the new reality that we, we are having to deal with. So when we went below 50%, it behoved on us as the ANC once again, to rise to the occasion and give leadership. We had to ask ourselves many questions. Do we go into opposition? And we discounted that and said, no, the ANC has to give leadership. Even when it was not in government, it gave leadership. The Freedom Charter, the African claims in the 40s. So leadership is what the ANC is expected to, 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 to give. And then that then led to us saying, as we are the largest party in the parliament system, we must then invite all. And you know, prior to, the, to this process of negotiating, I had been approached by a number of people who were saying, let's talk about um, the coalition. Uh, Ruth Mayer was one of those. He had been sent by people, uh, some people, and I, I didn't want to talk because I thought the ANC was going to win. So why would I even entertain talking about a coalition? And in many ways, that was a process of discounting what the surveys were saying <laughs> because the surveys kept uh, saying something and I, saying that we're going to go below 50. And... I discounted that and dismissed. Did you? Yes. I mean, did. Phoebe Potgieter is probably quite annoyed about that because she says, you know, the ANC's education section, they've done a lot of surveys and she warned that this might happen quite a while before the elections. And I was actually going to ask you, where were you and, and when did you realize that you would drop as low as 40 percent? Right at the last minute when the last count was done, well, as it was is being tallied up right. because we, we keep hoping that the most populated areas in our country, uh, when the count is done, will yeah. sort of come in. And we always say, we're waiting for Soweto to come in. We're waiting for 
uh, umlazi to come in in KZN because those usually just boost our numbers. But lo and behold, it didn't happen. So then the penny dropped. And as the penny dropped, I heard the sound very loudly and clearly. In my head, I then said to myself, our democracy has now matured. Way when I say Abu President Cyril Ramaphosa must stop pretending, especially him, the other ANC officials, maybe they don't know, but Cyril Ramaphosa knew what was going on all along. Can you stop pretending, please? Stop pretending. We know you knew that the IEC is um, is um, compromised for uh, you know for putting it mildly. Is compromised. You knew that you are going to go into collision with um, the DA. I mean, Soli Mapaila told us that you were having um, uh, having meetings in Irish where you people were discussing coalition government even before uh, the elections. This is true. You said yourself you've been approached, but you're giving us half proofs. I mean, Cyril Ramaphosa is still today, still um, denies that he knows who uh, uh, funded his CR7 campaign. The same CR7 campaign of which he could have just said, okay, here's my uh, bank details, uh, make it public. But he sealed those documents so that we as South Africans must never know ever that uh, who funded Cyril Ramaphosa for that campaign and then fired Bissum Kovane uh, while he was at it and, uh, and he took another puppet to advocate Koleka. Hi, we are in. I know, Cyril Ramaphosa. They, you, people say, I King, at least he did something. He gave people Ama 250. Ama 250, that have done what in people's lives? Those 250s is a million, so like 300 and something million. 300 and something, I believe it's 8 million or 12 to 13 million people that are, are getting those uh, 350s. The ANC could have built factories and businesses that benefit the, the communities in each province each month. With those 300, just imagine come, someone comes and says, okay, the youth of Northern Cape, here's 100 million, give us business plans. You know, and use the, the, the NYDA and say, guys, the youth, um, uh, Colin Malaji, you useless thing, uh, here's some money, uh, now win some voters with this money. You know, the, the, those 250s, they can rebuild uh, uh, renovate and bring back the factories in each province every month. They can do something. They can build streets. They can they, they can improve the township every month. But they want to give us is two fifty nine two fifty apple nine two fifty apple nine two fifty apple. When you calculate the whole sum, it's millions of rents, millions. <laughs> you know. And they're paying trillions actually per year, but they could have built businesses. It shows the lack of uh, innovation, the lack of thinking from our president. Uh, but our president is not here to leave a legacy. Hey, what legacy is, going, is he going to leave? When he's looking at his sweetheart, when he's looking at his children, when he's looking at his colleagues, when he's looking at his comrades, when he's looking at his uh, white monopoly capitalists who have been protecting him, have been paying uh, school fees for him ever since he went to varsity. What legacy does he think he's going to, he's going to leave? Usira Ramaphosa, who dropped the ANC by 17%, a fake 17%, by the way. If we went to some serious counting and the IEC was not there, the, the ANC got below 40%, actually. Actually, if there was a true, a truthful count, not this one of the uh, the the IEC that was uh, bought, that that was saying we need to release the results because the markets are watching. Yeah, but now, you are reporting to the markets, IEC. <laughs> I uh, no. So, um, Sira Ramaphosa, we are not fooled anymore. We see what you are doing. We, we we've been seeing it and we are not scared to say it we we don't fear anything because you also don't fear anything you have destroyed the black people of this country you have done nothing for the african child in, in your term in your term as a president your two terms as a president you have done nothing for the african child we continue to suffer under your leadership and you continue to do nothing and there's nothing you can do because you are so deep in the rabbit hole there's no more coming back
There's no more coming back for you. The only way you can come back is make a big announcement and say, hey guys, here is the truth. This is what we've been doing. This is what is happening. I'm sorry. That's the only thing that you can do that can save your life and make you a hero. But you are never going to do that because you fear for your life. You fear for your family's life. You fear for everybody's life. And you put your life up above and, be, uh, and uh, before um, all, all South African people, the poorest of the poorest. A president that can allow uh, children to fall in the pit toilet and the Department of Education says they don't have a, a budget while the president is a billionaire. That type of a president that allows children to study outside in the trees because the, the Department of Education can't build extra classes in villages. But the president is a billionaire. Ay, man, what type of a billionaire is this? What type of a heart do you have? I, that is why I say, guys, let's build our own schools. We can't depend on this government anymore. We need black independent schools. And Paseta is one of those schools. The Pan-African School of Economics, Technology and Agriculture. We don't have another choice. We must build our own institutions. We can't depend. Guys, it's not going to get better. Let me tell you the truth. It's not going to get better. When are you think at uh, 2029, uh, we're going to win by voting? Ah, Shem, sorry, Shem, right? Sorry, sorry, sorry. Um, we are never going to get Israelite to with a vote. Never. White monopoly capitalists will never allow that. Ever. They are planning now. There are things that they are planning to, to super fund the small parties. To super fund new parties that are coming. New characters are going to come. And you guys are going to be surprised. Man, where does this political party come from? Why is it getting 15 million? These things are coming for 2029. People are being bought. The IEC people are being bought. The, the, the IT companies are being bought. The, everything is being bought. If you guys think what we're going to vote and win is a little bit Kotrani. Let's build our own institutions. Let's build our own institutions. I want to buy 8% of our population. But truly, never. We're going to donate. We're going to make sure that in our generation, we do something that will all outlive us as a people. Something for the, for the coming generation. We're going to make sure. We're going to make sure. We want schools that are proud of their African heritage. Not schools that shy away from Africanism and run to Europeanism. The curriculum speaks nothing to the people. The curriculum does not teach uh, he, uh, proper African history does not teach economics, does not teach technology, does not teach agriculture to our children. We are sick and tired of this school system that we have now. But our sick and tired, the question is, what are we going to do after being sick and tired? And the answer is that we're going to stand up and do something about it and we're going to donate to Paseta. Thank you so much to everyone that has donated to Paseta. Thank you for our strategic partners. Thank you to, for our advisory panel. Thank you for everyone who's on the WhatsApp group, who's giving us, um, you know, who's motivating us all the time to say, guys, Continue to push. Paseta is there. We've got a website, www.paseta.co.za. We are starting with our online classes. Guys, let's push. Let us push. I don't want to go ask for funding overseas. In fact, we have said no to white monopoly capitalist funding. I'm not going to ask China to help us build the school. You and I are going to build this school. Nobody's going to help us. It's going to be built by Africans, by an African uh, uh, currency, by African money that circulate amongst us as Africans. I'm not going to ask anyone if it's Shulega because we, we, we failed to unite as African people. And that's fine with me. I like being successful, but being successful because white monopoly capital has helped us. Never. I'm not going to play part of that nonsense. It's Africans, for Africans, by Africans. That's it. It's going to be our school. We're going to be proud of it. That's it. You understand what I'm saying? So thank you for everyone who, who understands this vision and say, King, here's my 50 rand. Here's my 200 rand. Here's my 200 rand. Here's my 200,000. Here's my money. Please, guys, let's build this school together. Let's make it possible. You understand what I'm saying? Thank you so much, guys. I appreciate it. Until we meet again, don't forget to pray. After you pray, stand up, African child. Do your best so that God can do the rest. Peace in pan-Africanism. I salute you.